Greetings. My name is Dr. Nick Coltrell, and along with a good colleague and friend of mine, Dr. Jeff Berenelli, we have put together this quick little video on how to properly insert a dehydrated amniotic membrane. So we've really broken this down into a simple four-step process. We're going to break this down in a little bit more detail, but the four steps are speculum insertion, the placement of the membrane, the placement of a bandage contact lens, and then the speculum removal. And it's really about preparation. We like to get uh, everything set up prior to doing these so we're ready to go. And we're big fans of the 12 millimeter discs. They really fit well with um, the regular contact lens that you have in your office. A 14-0 diameter contact lens will fit right over top of the 12 millimeter membrane, allow it to seat well onto the cornea. We like the speculums that kind of have the wings, the sponge spheres, and uh, having anesthetic definitely worthwhile when you're using these for your patients. And really just highlighting uh, being prepared for this, as Nick stated earlier, having the presence of two bandage contact lenses is ideal. So just make sure you're properly prepared with all the necessary instruments and materials. So the first step is the lid speculum insertion. And we always want to anesthetize the eye prior, and I actually will anesthetize both just to decrease the blink reflex. I will recline the patient in the chair. It doesn't have to be completely 180 all the way to a supine position, so whatever is a comfortable working position for you. And then we're actually going to insert the speculum under the upper lid first. So we'll instruct the patient to look down while we put the blade of the speculum underneath the upper lid. Then we'll actually have the patient look up and insert the speculum onto the lower lid while squeezing near the opening to get maximum exposure. And you can see that in the video here, and this is the speculum that Nick was referring to that has the little wings. Um, it's able, you're able to grab great control of that speculum. Um, and as the patient looks down, you're going to insert it underneath the upper lid, and as they look up, you'll insert that blade onto their lower lid. Great. So then, of course, our next step is the membrane placement. And some of these, like the Amio disc, it has a watermark on here. You can see the, um, the IOP, the, the smaller ones only have the OP. It's like the patient is reading the, the O and the P when it goes on there. And with the 12 millimeter one, you can put it right so it centers right on the cornea and then use those sponge spheres to lay everything down, to flatten it into position the best you can. You're always going to end up with those little bit of wrinkles on there. It's really hard to avoid that, but it's a great way to kind of put that on there with that 12 millimeter disc. And encouraging the patient to keep both eyes open is generally helpful. I will actually use the little stand lamp as just a focal point for the patient so they have something to focus on. In the next step, here is the assertion of the bandage contact lens. You can use, put it on just like you normally would put a bandage contact lens on. You can do it from a jeweler's and lay it down uh, right on top of the cornea. And then a lot of times I'll use the sponge sphere to kind of help remove it from my finger, but definitely use the sphere to help flatten that contact lens over place to make sure you get full coverage of the uh, membrane and it's uh, not seeping out on any of the sides and creating any issues there. And then the lid speculum removal, this is the fourth and final step. So we're actually going to do it in the opposite order of the speculum insertion. So we're actually going to remove the lower lid first. So we instruct the patient to look up. We'll remove the speculum from the lower lid and then instruct the patient to look down while we remove it from the upper lid. So you really want to make sure that you're getting the cornea of the eye out of the way. So as you take that speculum out, you're not going to be taking the membrane or the contact lens with it. So here we go. So have the patient look up, get the cornea out of the way, and then look down. So once again, look up. You can see the lower lid will kind of grab that. And then you have them look down, get that cornea and the membrane contact out of the way. And then as you're gently removing the upper portion of the speculum, you're keeping it away from the cornea away from the membrane, away from the contact lens, 
and helping save it and keep it on the eye. I will then immediately have the patient close her eye to kind of help seat that in place to make sure uh, everything lays down the way we want. And we've developed this this four step process, um, you know, a little bit through trial and error. Um, so we have found this to work very, very well. Yeah, a lot of times we would take that speculum off and we take, you know, squeeze it both together at the same time and lift up. You take the speculum off, the contact, the membrane. I've done that numerous times, Jeff. Yeah, it's it's happened to me. Um, but with this with this process, um, it really hasn't happened. This has made things far easier. And I like this last slide bit. Uh, I like to call it fine-tuning, just in case the membrane needs to move a little bit or the contact needs to move a little bit. But it really kind of shows that the contact and the membrane are two distinct separate entities, and they're not married together. Sometimes uh, there's um, some clinicians that talk to us. They put the membrane in the contact lens. They put that on the eye. That's really not the most effective way to kind of use this product. You really want to put it on with the spectrum like we just showed, and then the contact lens will go over top, so then it will help uh, seat the membrane into the cornea, dissolve it where it needs to be without running the problems with the, the contact lens itself. So thank you for listening. Hopefully there's some useful information here, either if you are just getting into the use of amniotic membranes in your practice or if you've been using them in the past. Thank you for listening to us. Yeah, absolutely. It's our honor and privilege to speak with you here today. We really want to thank you for your time and allowing this opportunity to talk about uh, something we're very passionate about, amniotic membranes. Our email addresses are here. If you need to get a hold of us, please feel free. And let us know how it's going. We appreciate it. Thank you.